merrily down the highway, wheeling right along. Hear the tires humming, humming out a song. The rumble of the diesel, the shifting of the gears, the rhythm when he's rolling is music to his ears. Cannonball, cannonball. Any kind of weather, any time of day, when the rig is ready, he'll be on his way. He'll carry any cargo, he'll go anywhere. Name the destination, and brother, he'll be there. Cannonball, cannonball. What happened to you? I slept late. You went to bed the same time I did. Yeah, but I didn't get any sleep. The guy we saw in the movie kept me up all night. Oh, that's a new one. No, the bad guy looked just like Oren. Began to dislike him so much, I just couldn't sleep. <laughs> Man, are we going to have a good trip today? Oren wants to see us before we shove off. Oh, no. Mike Malone and Jerry Austin, a votre service. Vous n'êtes pas le seul qui parle français ici. You drive up number 14 empty to Orange Sound. Number 14? That's the one with the bum line. Harry ran short of parts, we're both short of empty, so that's it. Why is it that Mike and I always pick the lemons? I pick the lemons, you're picking up a load of dried fish. Fish? <laughs> oh, aren't we the lucky ones? You're driving up there empty, so there's no great big rush. But let me tell you this, it's still a generous six-hour run up there and four back to Toronto. Mm -hmm. And if all 14 poops out, Mike and I will push it up and back by hand. Another thing. Everything over eight tons is being detoured off Highway 6 at Mount Forest. We read about it in the morning papers, three days of cloud bursts. The road back to Durham is tricky, so watch it. And one more thing. Just one more? You'll be taking up a passenger all the way, Butler's orders. The new supply parts, ma'am. Why do we take him all the way to the Sound? Butler's idea wants him to know the route, the trucks, the personnel. He's starting out bad meeting you guys. <laughs> what happened to Sam Neal and parts? Company retired him. He got a pension. He didn't want a pension, he wanted to work. You fight it out with Butler. Your passenger's name is Ben Handley. Butler makes it sound important. So talk nice to him, he might know somebody. Now look here, Rora. Taking any fuel line trouble into account and with that detour, it's still a generous six hour run. Did you hear what he said? What, six hours? You know what I mean, Mike. Sam Neal, he's a sick guy. They need a replacement. He's been out for a week, nobody knows where anything is. You know what happened. We get number 14 with a bum line. Nothing bothers you, does it, Mike? Just the big things. Let's get a cup of java before we shove off. And another thing. Why do we have to nursemaid the relatives? We always get the chicken detail, Mike. Jerry, let's have a cup of coffee. Breakfast, boys. We've got a new chef this morning. Just coffee for me. How about the Romeo of the road? See, even Gertrude's against me. Oh, it was never for you, Sonny. <laughs> for it hot enough to burn his mouth, maybe it'll shut him up. Him? Never. <laughs> Jerry, what's wrong with giving a new man a lift? Well, nothing. But I heard about Sam Neal, too, and I sent Frank Shea over for that parts job. It's the perfect setup for a paraplegic. You know what a job like that would do for Frank. <laughs> what happens? Butler sends a teletype, and one of the relatives oozes in. To top it all, I gotta share a cab with him. A creep. You must be Malone in Austin. My name is Ben Handley. I'm not a relative young man, and I don't know what a creep is, but I'm your passenger. As I see it, there's nothing our friend can do about it. It's all a part of growing up. I'll wait for you near the truck.
This just ain't your day, Romeo. Getting an official reception at the other end? We just might. We've never been tucked into Betty by like that. Hold it, Jerry. Look, I don't know my job to anybody. I got it the hard way. Mr. Handel is not interested in the story of your life. Oh, but he sure lost up someone else's. Will you be quiet? Look, I... I don't know what's eating you. I didn't ask to ride with you. I was told to. I'm generally choosy about my traveling companions, but in this case, I had no choice, so... Why don't you do as I do and make the best of a very bad situation? That one line. Boy, do we pick. Feeding right. Is there something wrong? You're supposed to be the parts expert. You tell us. Turn off the motor. Foul. What did he say? What'd he say? No, it's a fuel line, Jerry. We fixed it before, we can do it again. Maybe the genius can help us. Jerry, lay off. Handley, this is your department. Maybe you can tell us what we need. Well, what do we need? I haven't the remotest idea. I got it. This fuel filter line's cracked. There's no fuel getting to the injector. Give me a spanner. Spanner? I'll get it. Uh, Henley, come in here. Right in here. Now, I'm gonna bend that tubing there over that shaft, and I'll bring it back here to this connection. Yeah. See that? Now, bring it in tight. Bring it up there tight. Here you are. All right, you got it? Close, no. Close, man. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Jerry. Hmm. Just hold it up tight. Right. You don't know a diesel from a sewing machine. You're right, Jerry. He's a relative. A parts man yet. You're in the light, Henry. Why don't you just go sit in the cab, huh? say we had a leaky radiator and we were losing our antifreeze. There's no antifreeze in the radiator. This is July. I can still smell alcohol. You're dreaming. No, he's not dreaming. I had a couple of drinks. So what? So it's against regulations. Ten-ton diesels and booze just don't mix. 
Knock it off, Jerry. If I'm a passenger, I can do as I please. Passenger my foot. You're an employee of the company. You're going to Toronto as a parts man. Let me tell you something, mister. My life depends on your seeing to it that these trucks get the proper parts. I'm not risking my life on someone who's going to start bending his elbow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's enough, Jerry. No. He's right. And Harry Butler's wrong. I'm not a parts man. I don't know anything about truck parts. Butler's an old friend of the family. He's giving me a chance to snap out of it. Well, it won't work. I told him it won't. It's been too long now. I can't... I can't make it. You might as well stop and let me off. I'll let you out in Toronto, right in front of Harry Butler's office. What's the use? I can't lick it. I can't do anything in moderation anymore. It's a farce for me to be handling truck parts. There's only one thing I really know, or did know. And that's gone and buried. Why don't you try to sleep it off? We've still got a long haul to make. Sleep it off. That's all I ever do. Bring it on and sleep it off. Now you're right. Shakespeare said it. Oh, sleep. Oh, gentle sleep. Nature's soft nurse. How have I frighted thee that thou no more wilt weigh my eyelids down? and steep my senses in forgetfulness. Still sleeping. First call we've seen since we left Mount Forest. I could go in the ditch for him, but I won't. There goes a guy who doesn't care. Sleeping Beauty doesn't care either. I'm okay. Go and see about him. Should have worried about that before this happened. Jerry! Take care of you in a minute. This fellow's out cold. That speed demon in the convertible caused this whole thing. He's all right, though. We better move him out of here. think you're doing? Help me get this man on level ground. In the back of the truck. Well, do as I say. I don't think we should move him again. Of course we can move him. He's dead. We may be able to save him, but we haven't got a moment to lose, so do exactly what I say. I hope you'll find a bottle in my traveling bag in the cab. Bring it. And get me whatever sharp tools you got. A knife. Uh, an old fishing knife? Fine. What are you going to do? Open him up and try and bring him back to life. You're crazy. I'm not interested in your opinions or your diagnosis. 
Now get out and stop a car and send for an ambulance. These are the only two cars we've seen in over an hour. How's the fellow in the convertible? Hurt his knee, says it's okay. Might be hurt internally, though. I haven't time to do anything about him now. Can the convertible be driven? Mm -hmm. Steering knuckle's broken. I could disconnect the horse, the cab. Do it. And when you're ready to leave, come back and I'll tell you what to say. How are you going to tell me what to say? We well, haven't got time to talk. First aid kit? In the cab. We'll get it. I need that kit! Trouble? Pins frozen. I'll be with you in a minute. Carry what you believe. Him, I mean. Yeah, how about that? Got the kit, Doctor. Thank you, Mike. What's in it? Well, it's, uh, it's the usual. Uh, got bandage and tape and cotton batting. It's a bottle of iodine and uh, swabs. There's a clean shirt in my bag. Get it out and lay it out here. And put everything on it. I'll take the gauze now. Got something strong enough for cutting? This knife won't do. Only some wire clippers. That'll do. Um, wipe it off. <coughs> Douse it with this. What you gonna do now? I'm gonna snap a rib so I can get my hand in there. his heart. His heart? I'm going to massage it until I can feel it pulsate. You think, uh, will it work? I don't know. How's Jerry doing? Uh, if you don't need me here, I, I think I'll go out and give him a hand. Go ahead. Uh, tighter than a drum. How's Handley? Uh, he acts like he knows what he's doing. telephone and get an ambulance out here. Tell him about the fellow in the convertible, and then tell him you need oxygen, suture sets, adrenaline, dressing, calcium chloride, and a heart defibrillator. You got that? Let's see. Oxygen, dressings, adrenaline, calcium chloride, and a heart vibrator. Defibrillator. Well, if you're close, they'll know what you mean. And suture sets, that's important. 
defibrillator and suture sets. Mike, get in here. I can feel a little pulsation. There's got to be a lot more. What time is it now? Twenty past. How far do you figure it is to a nearest town with a hospital? Maybe 40, 50 miles. By the time Jerry gets there, it could be an hour, hour and a half. Would it be too long? Could be. How long can you keep him alive like this? Uh, two hours, maybe. If we could get him breathing on one lung and health gets here in time, we could have him on his feet in two weeks. Weak as a cat, but he'd be alive. Ben, why'd you ever give this up? Medicine? Nobody wants me. Do you know anything about first aid? A little. We'll move up to his head. Now, take him by the elbows. Yeah. And move him out. In and out. Like a pump. Okay. You're doing fine. He's bleeding. Out of gauze, Doc. Well, use the shirt. You know, Ben, there are lots of places need a doctor. We got a doc down at CNA in Toronto. He just signed up for a job just outside of Medicine Hat in Alberta. Everywhere, people need doctors. There's lots of opportunities. It's me. What do you mean, it's me? Doctor has to believe in himself before he can even try to heal others. I haven't got enough self-assurance to prescribe nose drops. I've lost faith in myself. Well, you sure knew what to do this time. Maybe I did. Because I didn't have to think. And a good doctor has to think. How long has it been? It's over two hours. And that speed demon. He ought to get life. All he gets is a sprained ankle. Lucky. Listen. Take a couple more minutes, gentlemen. We got nothing but time. You must be the gentleman with the truck. I'm Dr. Merritt from the hospital. Which one? This is Dr. Handley. Oh, doctor. Your patient is doing fine. My patient? You performed a miracle. Words can't express my feelings. Well, I had a little help. Jerry here and Mike. I'm a surgeon myself, doctor, but I haven't seen anything like this for a long, long time. Under the best conditions, that operation is hazardous. Your accomplishment won't go unnoticed, I can promise you that. Oh, I forgot. Uh, these are my friends. Dr. Merritt, Jerry Austin. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Mike Malone. Pleased to meet you, doctor. Hello, Mike. Everybody let us know what I was talking about. Come on, say, get the fish, get the fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
one thing he did get. When Doc Miller moves to Medicine Hat, CNA's got itself a new doctor. How's the journey, gentlemen? And none for me, thanks. Why, no self-respecting trucker ever turns down a cup of java. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jerry, maybe your friend will get that job after all. Down the highway, wheeling right along, hear the tires humming, humming out a song. The rumble of the diesel, the shifting of the gears, the rhythm when he's rolling is music to his ears. Cannonball, cannonball. Any kind of weather, any time of day, when the rig is ready, he'll be on his way. He'll carry any cargo, he'll go anywhere. Aim the destination that brother he 